Good afternoon. Welcome to your devotion for May 25th. We're going to talk about the scripture for this Sunday, which comes from the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, the famous 8th chapter about the love of God. Paul is introducing another of the great metaphors in which he describes this new relationship of the Christian to God. I'm taking some material from William Barclay, the theologian uh, from the 1950s and 60s and even 70s from Great Britain. He says that Paul speaks of the Christian being adopted into the family of God. And it's only when we understand how serious and complicated a step Roman adoption was that we really understand the depth of the meaning in this passage. I'll begin to read from Romans chapter 8 at the 12th verse. This is the word of God. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this portion of his holy word. Roman adoption, says Barclay, was always rendered more serious and more difficult by the Roman patria protestas. This was the father's power over his family. It was the power of absolute disposal and control, and in the early days was actually the power of life and death. In regard to his father, a Roman son never came of age. No matter how old he was, he was still under the patria potestas, in the absolute possession and under the absolute control of his father. Obviously, this made adoption into another family a very difficult and serious step. In adoption, a person had to pass from one patria potestas to another. There were two steps. The first was known as manchipatio and was carried out by a symbolic sale in which copper scales were symbolically used. Three times the symbolism of sale was carried out. Twice the father symbolically sold his son, and twice he brought him, bought him back, but the third time he did not buy him back, and thus the patria potestas was held to be broken. There followed a ceremony called the vindicatio, the adopting father went to the praetor, one of the Roman magistrates, and presented a legal case for the transference of the person to be adopted into his patria potestas. When all of this was completed, the adoption was complete. Clearly, this was a serious and impressive step. But it is in the consequences of adoption which are most significant for the picture that is in Paul's mind. There were four main ones. First, the adopted person lost all rights in his old family and gained all the rights of a legitimate son in his new family. In the most binding legal way, he got a new father. It followed that he become an heir to his new father's estate. Even if other sons were afterwards born, it did not affect his rights. He was in un in an inalienably co-heir with them. Third, in law, 
the old life of the adopted person was completely wiped out. For instance, all debts were canceled. He was regarded as a new person entering into a new life with which the past had nothing to do. In the eyes of the law, he was absolutely the son of his new father. Roman history provides an outstanding case of how completely this was held to be true. The Emperor Claudius adopted Nero in order that he might succeed him on the throne. They were not in any sense blood relations. Now Claudius already had a daughter, Octavia. To cement the alliance, Nero wished to marry her. Nero and Octavia were in no sense blood relations, yet in the eyes of the law, they were brother and sister, and before they could marry, the Roman Senate had to pass special legislation. We'll talk more about this Roman process of adoption uh, on Thursday's devotion. I hope that you find it as interesting as I do, and when we talk about it on Sunday morning, we'll be talking about what it means to become adoptive heirs with Jesus into the kingdom of God. Until then, may this find you happy and healthy. Continue to trust in God, but continue to wash your hands. God bless.